Avi, the multiverse has gone from science fiction uh, to philosophical metaphysics to a nice jump to conventional wisdom among uh, many uh, cosmologists and it's become the standard model for understanding because it's derived from inflation theory for this universe and if you have inflation uh, for this universe then you a natural consequence of that is the multiverse uh, you have uh, recently uh, challenged the the basic thinking behind inflation theory to yield to, to a multiverse and it's become very controversial I'd like to understand um, understand your position. Well, indeed, there was a letter signed by 33 scientists, very distinguished, uh, trying to enforce the view that inflation and the multiverse are still scientific theories, uh, while we challenged this. And um, it reminded me uh, that in 1930, there was a book written uh, about why Einstein's theory of relativity is wrong, and it was uh, signed by over 30 scientists. And when Einstein was asked, what does he think about it? He said, well, if, uh, if I'm wrong, then it's enough to have one author. You don't need 33. <laughs> Authority is irrelevant for science. You need evidence. And in principle, one kid can tell you the truth <laughs> if there is good evidence for it. And um, my problem with the multiverse is that um, according to the versions that are being advocated, everything that can happen will happen in it an infinite number of times. So the first issue is that it makes you lazy because if you see something in our universe, uh, you don't need to explain it because anything that can happen will happen an infinite number of times. So you can accommodate that within your picture of the multiverse irrespective of what you find, instead of trying to explain it from some fundamental principles. Uh, and I have a problem with that because we get paid <laughs> and just saying that there is the multiverse out there. And you know, you can think even of a student that fails in an exam, that student would say, well, there are many duplicants of me elsewhere that got an A, so why should they strive to get an A in this particular region of space-time? Uh, but the second aspect of it is that it's not a predictive theory. Uh, first, we don't know the measure of how to assign probabilities to different outcomes since we don't have the full understanding of the landscape of the multiverse. And as a result, the theory cannot predict the probabilities of different outcomes and compare them against data. So. Uh, one way to falsify theory is if it excludes some possibilities yeah. and favors others, because then you do the experiment and you check whether it agrees with the predictions. But if your theory does not exclude anything, it allows everything with unassigned probabilities, then there is no way to falsify it. Now, of course, it's very comfortable for some physicists to argue that because they can never be ruled out. But I view science as a learning experience by which we make mistakes. We are sort of like kids uh, that try to learn about everything around them. They uh, make, uh, they pose questions and they bring up explanations and they are often wrong, but sometimes right. And it's a learning experience. And having this innocence of uh, allowing yourself to fail by seeing something different from what you expected I think is crucial for scientific discovery. And when someone comes with a theory that would explain anything that the experimentalist would find, I have a problem with that. All right, so the way I see the, uh, the explanatory sequence starts with the need for inflation in this universe to explain a series of problems that we're familiar with, the so-called horizon problem, flatness, various specific technical things that inflation seems to solve because it expands so, so, so very rapidly. And then the multiverse comes out as a consequence, a forced consequence of what inflation theory is for the, this universe. That's one kind of multiverse, another kind of multiverse. Yes, so I completely agree that this type of uh, a multiverse is, is quite natural in the context of inflation. And in fact, uh, it's very natural to expect uh, the conditions that we see within the observable volume of the universe to extend well beyond our horizon. Right, right. There is no reason to assume that there is an edge just right. at, <laughs> what we can uh, see. out yeah. to where we can see. 
Uh, however, the, the question is, what are the conditions that are being realized out there? And are they so different than what we have here? Uh, are the laws of physics different in some other regions? Uh, is it really true that everything that can happen will happen? Maybe not. Maybe there are some fundamental principles mm -hmm. that limit the range of possibilities. We don't know. Uh, and so agreeing to this concept that everything that can happen will happen is unjustified, in my opinion, at this point. Well, uh, when you say everything that can happen and will happen, that, that is a, a byproduct specifically of infinity. That's a, uh, whether it's a technical thing, uh, when you have infinity, you have a, it causes problems no matter what, what, what you do. Well, there are different kinds of infinity. For example, if, if you have a physical law, then it limits the range of possible outcomes. Yes. The whole idea behind uh, pr predictability of science is that you are limiting the range of possibilities to those that the laws of physics, for example, allow you. And that's an essential component in our learning experience. Uh, when a detective comes to a crime scene, there are many possible suspects. By figuring out who the real criminal is, you learn something new. Uh, allowing everyone to be criminal in different parts of this uh, scene cr crime scene is not teaching us much. Do you have an alternative? Do you need an alternative to inflation theory in order to maintain this challenge? My view is that uh, we haven't yet found the correct theory that unifies quantum mechanics and gravity. Uh, once we have that theory, we will be able to extrapolate back in time to the time of inflation and beyond, even to the Big Bang, and figure out the answers to these questions. So I think what we are lacking right now is a theory that is believable, that is testable, and that uh, is unique in unifying quantum mechanics and gravity. This theory will help us go back to the Big Bang, figure out what was there at the beginning, and also figure out what black hole singularities are all about. These are two places where Einstein's theory of gravity breaks yeah. down. And we would like to figure out what happens under these pathological circumstances. And uh, could inflation theory under those conditions still be maintained, do you believe? So I believe that we have a, a, a toy model right now that we call inflation that is very sketchy but uh, would be modified significantly, qualitatively, once we have this unified theory of quantum mechanics and gravity. And I think all the problems that we face in the context of the multiverse, in the context of the Big Bang singularity, what was there before, uh, in the context of uh, black hole singularities, the information paradox of black holes, all of these issues come about because we don't have a good understanding of how to unify quantum mechanics and gravity. And some people want to have a shortcut. Without having that theory, they want to uh, come up to uh, a, a global understanding of the universe, and I think that's premature.